Hello, this is the CoCon Room Configurator walkthrough. As with any other CoCon application, you'll need to first make sure that your CoCon Room server is running in the background, which mine is. I'm going to go ahead and launch Room Configurator. First you'll get this window, and you'll select your system. In most cases you'll just have one system here. You'll only see multiple if you have a computer that's connected to say like a large facility network with multiple different rooms and multiple engines living on it. So we'll log in and you'll be taken to this screen. You'll either have this or you might have a blank synoptic like we're going to see in a second. So we'll start in the upper left and click create and that'll make a new synoptic. This may be what you see the first time as well. So the first thing we'll want to do is probably give it a name for the meeting type or the room that this is a synoptic for. And this will be our working area where we'll put our image and our mic buttons in a few moments. Over on the left, there's a couple other sections. You have synoptic properties. This deals with the background image, essentially, its sizing, its source, etc. And then down here, we have a node list. This is a list of all of the connected delegate units to the system. You won't see interpreter consoles here, just uh, conference microphones, and we will bring these into the synoptic in a moment. So let's start by getting a background image. Clicking open image will bring up your file browser, and you can grab an image from there. You can take a picture of the room, take a screenshot of maybe the blueprints, whatever works for you, and we'll open it. And you'll see, in most cases, your image isn't going to fit this default window. By default, the synoptic settings down here, the width and height, are 800 by 600, which is fairly small. And we will kind of manipulate this size in a moment. First thing we'll do up at the top for uh, my demonstration is we're just going to click Fill Synoptic. So that'll resize my image to that 800 by 600. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some of our nodes in, or our microphones and you simply click and drag and bring them into the working space here. And you can just click on them and reposition them as you wish. One thing that you're going to notice here is the sizing of the buttons doesn't exactly match up. And there's kind of two ways that these can be resized. You'll see here in the size section, you could go in and retype a different size and hit enter and the button will resize itself. I'm going to go ahead and change it back. But there is a better way for multiple reasons. The ideal way is to get your background image to make sense kind of on the scale of the amount of buttons you're going to push so or put in. So if I only had a few units in maybe just a, a little dais and that was it, the defaults could work. But the bigger the room gets, the bigger you probably want to make your background image. This makes it easier to add new microphones later and prevents uh, buttons from maybe getting cropped or only seeing a part of them in certain applications depending on which way you size them. So let's go ahead and adjust the background image. Back in Synoptic Properties, first thing I like to do is just click Keep Aspect Ratio. You can quickly and easily lose the original aspect as you're adjusting some of these numbers, but with that checked, when you change the width or height, the other number will change respectively. So I'm going to go ahead and make the background image a lot bigger here, 2500, and hit enter. And you'll see the background height just readjusted also. And now we only have a little sliver of our room. So you'll also want to go down to the synoptic settings and make these numbers here match. And now we still are only seeing a portion of it, but we can come to the upper right here where there's this slider. And this is our kind of whole view of the room. We can make it really big, we can make it really small. But you'll notice, right, the image looks about the same, but our buttons got way smaller. And they make a lot more sense to fit the scale of this. As you could imagine, as we start to add 30, 40, or more buttons, this scale will probably make sense. And we can also say, let's take it down a good bit. And 
And now maybe the size is a little more manageable and we can change our slider again. And as you can see, I'm moving the nodes around. So you might want to change your ID size or your label font size. The ID is the unit number in there and the label font size is the name below. So what you might want to do is have all of them selected. So shift click and select all of them and then control, press and hold control and double click on one of the label font sizes. We can type in a new size and hit enter. And once we do that, you'll see it changes for all the nodes. So good idea. Again, we're going to shift click to highlight our entire list while they're all highlighted, pick any unit and you'll control double click to get this little editor, type in your new number, hit enter, and it will change all of those. Once you've finished editing your synoptic to your liking, simply click save and the synoptic will be available to you in the other applications like meeting manager and operator so that we can use it for a live meeting. Thanks for watching.